Hi, I'm Richard Dennis. In my new novel, Fiume Restoral, a futurist painter struggles to find his way in the years after the First World War. He travels to the embattled city of Fiume where he encounters a host of exceptional characters. The characters are fictional for the most part, but some are loosely based on real people who achieved prominence, or in some cases, notoriety, in the first three decades of the 20th century. These real men and women are largely forgotten today, which is a shame. I'd like to tell you a little bit about their lives to give you a taste of the era in which Fiume Restoral unfolds. The first in my parade of forgotten notables is Mina Loy. Never heard of her? Well, you're not alone. But a hundred years ago, if you were a fan of modern art and literature, you would know her name. The Dial was an avant-garde journal back in those days, and the cover of the November 1922 edition shows an impressive list of contributors. The painter Robert Delaunay, poets T.S. Eliot and William Butler Yeats. Others on the list you might recognize include Constantine Brancusi, Pablo Picasso, Sherwood Anderson, and Ezra Pound. Even Bertrand Russell has a spot in this issue. Now that, my friends, is an awesome group of heavyweights, and Mina is hanging right there with them. That's right, Mina Loy's poem appears in the same issue as T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland. Now, I want to sort something out right at the start. This is a bio of Mina Loy, the modernist poet and artist. Please don't confuse her with the later-born actress Myrna Loy. Mina Gertrude Lowy was born in London on December 17, 1882, and grew up wanting to be an artist. She studied in London and Munich before moving to Paris, where she both painted and was in demand as a model. Surviving photographs prove she was a stunning beauty. During her time in Paris, she married and bore two children. She and her husband later moved to Florence, where they separated and pursued affairs with other partners. In the salons of Florence and later in Paris and New York, Mina mingled with people like Gertrude Stein, Marcel Duchamp, Man Ray, Wallace Stevens, Dejuna Barnes, Marianne Moore, and the futurist Filippo Marinetti and Giovanni Papini, and many others. Now, besides writing and painting, Mina created exotic lampshades and designed dresses. She acted in a play with the Provincetown Players, co-starring in the experimental drama Lima Beans with the poet William Carlos Williams. The New York Evening Sun featured her in an article as the prime example of the modern woman, one who wrote free verse, painted, designed her own clothes, and knew about futurism. Now, Mina's poetry is her most endearing legacy. Her poems are intense, complex, sensual, intelligent, feminist, and daringly open about women's sexuality. They're difficult and, like a lot of modern art, not for everyone. She explored themes of pain and loss and alienation, but mingled them with new ways of looking at identity and gender. Rhyme and meter were dispensed with. Grammar and punctuation were mangled, and sex, not the romantic kind, was laced throughout. Unfortunately for her, the originality and eroticism of her poems made them difficult to get published in any but the most daring of contemporary avant-garde journals like The Dial. Money was a problem for Mina. Journals didn't pay much. At times, Mina relied on patrons like Mabel Dodge and Peggy Guggenheim but for the most part struggled to make ends meet, hence the lampshades and the clothing designs. She met her true love, the poet and boxer Arthur Craven, at an artist's costume ball. They married and moved to Mexico where she became pregnant. After a brief time together, tragedy struck. He sailed off on the small boat he was repairing and was never seen again. His death haunted her for the rest of her life. 
Mina moved around for the next 30 years, living for various stretches in New York, Florence, Berlin, and Paris. She continued to write poems and create lampshades. Fearing for her safety as the Nazis advanced, Mina's father was Jewish. She fled Europe in the late 30s and returned to New York, where she settled in a boarding house in the Bowery. There she befriended the homeless and created collages pieced together from items she found on the streets. During these years, she became more reclusive and saw little of her more famous avant-garde friends. She still wrote poetry and occasionally saw her work get published. In 1953, she moved to Colorado to be with her daughters and grandchildren, where she died in 1966. Well, you can find much more on her life in the excellent biography, Becoming Modern, The Life of Mina Loy by Carolyn Burke. Thanks for listening. I hope you've enjoyed this short biography. Join me again in two weeks for another look at a forgotten luminary of the 20th century. And please check out my novel, Fume Restoral. Thank you.